Hi, so a mate of mine walked in a couple of days ago and he had two of these things. This is a hover transfer as a scooter that makes it a good scooter. There are hundreds of pounds when brand new and when he said to me, do you want one of them? Of course I said, yes, I've been waiting to get hold of one of these for a while. Now these things use some glorious hub motors and that's what I've wanted. And he wanted 20 quid for this, so I gave him 20 quid, which is 10 pounds a motor. And I think it was just excellent. Now then soapbox time. The problem with these things, although they're beautiful, although they contain marvellous motors, wonderful electronics and a great design, they are a piece of trash. The story of this one, I think, is the story that's typical of this kind of stuff. It gets bought because it's a fad, it's used for, I don't know, a few hours probably while it's fun, the fun wears off, it goes in the shed and it sits there for ages until it wends its ride down to a junkyard sale and that's exactly what happened to these two hoverboards here, and it means I could pick them up at 20 pounds, but you know, 20 pounds, that's great for me, but it's really as much use as a chocolate teaspoon, and that's why it's a fad, it's fun, and that's the end of it, and yet it's hundreds of pounds. I mean, what a shocking consumer society we live in when we make this kind of garbage so that we can throw it away. But Enough of the soapbox, it's lucky for me, I've got a couple of really nice motors and all I have to do really is undo the screws on the back of there and prise it apart, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, lifted off the plastic cases, that's where the battery went, actually the battery was buggered. Here's the control board for one motor, control for the other, centralised control, probably accelerometer and uh, gimbal stabiliser or whatever it is that keeps you from falling off, and the motor sitting right there. Okay, I'm not the most subtle when it comes to stuff like this. All I basically do is undo every screw that I can see. And in this case, that's exactly what was required. All this plastic gubbins was screwed onto this nice cast something or other metal frame. And you can see that the wheels are just held on there by those blocks. These things that we saw actually are the sensors, in fact, for the foot paddles. So there were sensor foot paddles. That's the main control board and that controls absolutely everything. Sensor input and motor output. Uh, probably never going to use it actually, but it's there. This stuff is just garbage, and now we want to do these to get those two motors out. Okay, we got it disassembled, and we're not really interested in much more than these motors, but a lot of people want to repair these, and when it comes to repairing them, what they usually do actually is just buy the whole wheel and motor. But it's got a tire around it, and this section here is in fact the motor. Now, on the back are six screws holding it in, and they're uh, T20s, actually. So if you use a T20 Torx bit, you'll get those screws out. But... There's a whole load of neodymium magnets in there holding the rotor in place and it is tough to get off. So what you need is to get it into a vise, grip the axle, and the axle's pretty tough, I mean it's meant for you to stand on it, so grip the axle and then straight up, push it and you'll get the motor hub off. And in there you can see all those neos nicely placed in there. That tyre can now actually be removed, obviously don't let anything get in there, it'd <laughs> be a nightmare cleaning it out. There's a bearing in there, behind that bearing has got a thrust washer. And there is the actual rotor itself attached to the plate. So that's the basics of the motor. Now we just want the tyre off. The plate just pulls straight off the axle just to keep you the rotor actually. And you can see the control electronics right there, they're the sensor electronics. And to get the tyre off, you basically get something between the case and the tyre and just lever away until the tyre comes off. So there's a lip right there, and I'm just getting my lever in between the lip and the tyre and levering away. And there we go, we lever the tyre off. Now it's no wonder these motors are so expensive. That is a very nice ring of very strong neodymium magnets in there actually. So once you've done that, I mean, it's useful to be able to do that in case that washer breaks or you get something in there and, and your wheel will snatch up. So it's useful to know how to do that if you want to repair them. But then putting it back together, <laughs> these are strong magnets. So all you do is line it up again and let it pull itself back in there. But clearly, get a good grip on it, be careful with it, because those are strong magnets. So let's put that back in. <laughs> Straight in! <laughs> 
Okay, I haven't done anything fancy with it because we're just having a bit of a look to see what kind of thing it'll do. So I've put the axle back in the vise and I've connected up um, two of the wires. So we've got like a single phase AC coming out of there. And then I've put it onto the soldering iron as a resistive load and the meter's right there, incidentally. Let's see if you can see that. There you go, right there. So I'm going to give it a spin by hand and we'll see what we get. Okay, six, seven volts by spinning it by hand. Let's have a look at the amps. Okay, same thing, it's connected in series now, so we'll just give it a spin. And we're getting about five milliamps or so. So, kind of promising. I mean, we've got to get it into something to see what it'll do, but there you go, a hoverboard motor being used as a generator. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll carry on with this as a bit of a project, I think. So, please remember to like and subscribe.